Hi guys, and welcome to another video on Railways Explained. As we promised, after the video dedicated to the magnificent Euro Tunnel, and another in which we spoke about the project High Speed One in Great Britain, today we talk about the first high speed rail system in Europe, better known as the French TGV. Let's clarify some things right at the beginning. The abbreviation TGV actually means a high speed train that operates on LGV, which means high speed line. In this video we will put our focus on the concept of LGV's development and only after that in a separate video we will put TGV, Eurotunnel and High Speed 1 in the same bracket and mix those three to find out their mutual synergy and the effect they had on European traffic performance. Now let's start with the video. Did you know that the initiative that preceded the current TGV was in fact the initiative to develop trains that would use gas turbines for propulsion? That's exactly what happened. SNCF, the French National Railways at the time, spent significant efforts to raise the speeds of conventional trains into the range from 180 to 200 km per hour for non-electrified sections. This was tried by using the so-called turbo trains. We need to say that energy was reasonably cheap in those years, and gas turbines were a compact and efficient way to fulfill requirements for more power. The desire for higher speeds on railways and successful development of the turbo power program were the two ideas that came together in the late 1960s. Additional stimulation, of course, was the launch of the Japanese Shinkansen high-speed trains in 1964. However, these two merged in a joint program of SNCF and the railway industry to explore the possibilities of a high-speed gas turbine units. The project, initiated in 1967, was branded as rail possibilities on new infrastructures. As a result of this, several experimental trains were developed, as well as a high-speed turbotrain prototype. That's how the turbotrain TGV-001 was born. In a test run covering almost half a million kilometers, the TGV-001 turbotrain exceeded 300 km per hour on 175 runs and reached a top speed of 318 km per hour on December 8, 1972. This was and still is the world speed record for a non-electric train. With the oil crisis of 1973, it no longer seemed economically viable to power the future high-speed trains with fossil fuels. The priorities and expectations have changed and the fully electric operation became a norm, which resulted in an extensive redesign and another set of test programs. In the next two years, work was done on the design and development of TGV train sets, and in parallel, SNCF began defining the first concepts of the future high-speed railway lines. The first proposal was to construct a new line between Paris and Lyon based on the three principles. Dedicated line for passenger traffic, compatibility with the existing railway network, and high-frequency operation with short journey times. In that sense, in 1976, the French government approved the TGV project and provided funding for a 409 km railway line connecting Paris and Lyon, which was branded as LGV Sud-Est, or in English, Southeast High Speed Line. This LGV line was designed as double-track rail line for speeds up to 300 km per hour. Also the same year, SNCF ordered the production of the first batch of train sets. As per TGV trains, during the research for this video, we realized how extensive and interesting this topic is, and because of that, we decided to make a special video in which we will show the development and performance of these trains. In any case, works on the LGV Sud Est began in December 1976. As early as September 1981, followed by a grand ceremony, the first TGV passenger train left Paris. Five days earlier, the inauguration was held by the French president François Mitterrand. Thus began the long tradition of high-speed ground transportation in France. With the introduction of this service, the travel time between Paris and Lyon has been shortened from four to only two hours. As a result, between 1980 and 1984, air travel fell by 50% between these two cities. In 1982, which represents the first full year of operation, 1.3 million passengers were transported on this line. That number increased significantly during 1989, which preceded the launch of the second LGV line, 
and amounted to 19.2 million passengers. The success of LGV Sud Est provided the basis for further expansion of the network. As you can see on the screen, the LGV network was developed based on the hub and spoke principle, where the Paris was the hub. This network approach aimed to link the capital with the main cities and to enable the TGV users to travel out from Paris and return within the same day. The 3 hour travel time is the threshold that is often presented as being the limit beyond which the relevance of high speed rail diminishes rapidly in comparison to air travel. This Paris Lyon model can also help us understand the logic behind future network extensions. Whether we are talking about the local French network or its connections with neighboring countries, Belgium, the UK, Germany, Luxembourg, or the Netherlands, the TGV does not aim to reduce journey times for short and middle distance travelers. Rather, it aims to attract long-distance interurban mobility. In other words, business and leisure travelers. Also, we need to mention the interoperability aspect of TGVs, or the fact that they can operate on new LGV lines, but also on conventional railway lines. Due to this characteristic, the technical progress offered by the TGV is entirely compatible with the existing rail infrastructure, which was indeed an excellent idea. Beside this, we need to add that political reasons were the one of the key ingredients for the success of the TGV. For local politicians, the arrival of the TGV has often been seen as the springboard for launching extensive city center regenerations. Also, there has often been extensive regional political lobbying over a TGV service and the construction of new LGV lines meeting the Paris Lyon model. In other words, lines capable of speeds up to 320 km per hour or today even up to 350 km per hour. In order not to talk about each LGV line individually, we have made an animation of how the network of high-speed lines in France has been developed up to these days. After already mentioned Paris-Lyon, the first line was LGV Atlantique, which linked the cities of Le Mans and Tours with Paris. The next one is LGV Rhône-Alpes, which connects Lyon and Valence. Then we have LGV Nord that connects Paris to the Belgian border and the Channel Tunnel via Lille. After that was constructed LGV Interconnexion Est that connects the LGV Nord, LGV Sud Est and LGV Atlantique through the suburbs of Paris. LGV Mediterranean was the next one. This line connects Valence, Savignan and Marseille. Then we have LGV Est Phase 1 that connects this place 20 km east of Paris and this place between Metz and Nancy, LGV Perpignan Figueres, a cross-border connection with Spain. It connects Perpignan in France and Figueres in Spain. LGV Rhine Rhone is the first interregional connection that does not directly connect Paris with some of the other regions. Only one segment of this route was built from Jean-Lys near Dijon to Lutterbach near Mulhouse while other parts of this route from Dijon to Lyon and connection with LGV Sud-Est and thus connection with Paris have never been constructed. LGV Est Phase 2 has further extension from Boudrecourt towards Strasbourg. LGV Sud-Europe Atlantic the extension of LGV Atlantic that connects Tours and Bordeaux. LGV Bretagne Pays la Roire the extension of LGV Atlantic that connects Le Mans and Rennes. And finally, LGV Nîmes Montpellier, the southwestern extension of the LGV Mediterranean, 60 km towards the Spanish border. All in all, in 36 years, the French built 2,647 km of high speed rail lines and thus connected almost the entire territory. Of course, there are plans to further extend the LGV network, but we want to mention only one important project Lyon Turin. The Lyon Turin is a high speed railway line that will link Italian and French high speed rail networks. The core of the project is Mont Dambin based tunnel, which will cross the Alps. With 57.5 km, it will be the longest rail tunnel in the world, ahead of the 57.1 km long Gotthard based tunnel. It accounts for one third of the estimated overall cost of the project, and it is the only part of the line where the works have already started. We will not go into details about this because we are thinking to make a special video in the future only for this topic. Now let's have some more discussion about LGV lines.
the primary aspect of the French high-speed rail network, which is also considered its main advantage, is the fact that LGVs are reserved primarily for TGV trains. Therefore, permitted axle load on LGV lines is intentionally set at 17 tons, in order to prevent heavy rolling stock from damaging very accurate track alignment required for high-speed operation. Also, because the speeds of TGVs are too high, their drivers are not even able to see and react to traditional track side signals, and that's why an automated system called TVM, or Track to Train Transmission, was developed exclusively for LGVs. On certain lines, this system has been upgraded with the RTMS, with the first such line being the LGV EST. LGV tracks also have some other key differences compared to conventional ones. The radii of curves are larger so the trains can traverse them at higher speeds without increasing the centripetal acceleration felt by the passengers. Also, the diameter of tunnels is greater than usual, especially at entrances, in order to reduce the effects of air pressure changes and a so-called tunnel boom, which could be problematic at higher speeds. Regarding the cost of construction, we were not able to find the values for all LGVs, however, on the screen you can see the values per kilometer of line for some of those lines. The cheapest to build was the LGV Paris Lyon, due to the fact it does not pass through complex terrain, while the most expensive was the LGV Mediterranean, which included 7 exceptional viaducts and 13 km of tunnels. Now, let's discuss the traffic performance. As we already mentioned, with the completion of LGV Sud Est in 1981, SNCF began high speed operation. In that initial year, the volume of passengers was limited due to the fact that the service started only in September and that the completed section of high-speed operation was only halfway from Paris to Lyon. Nevertheless, in less than three months, 1.3 million passengers were carried by TGV trains. In 1982, the figure already hit 6 million, and in 1984, the first full year of operation, this number rose to 14 million passengers. In following years, the number of high-speed services progressively increased, and before the end of the decade in 1989, about 100 million passengers have been transported. In 2004, the number of passengers hit 1 billion. In 2007, the annual volume reached 100 million for the first time, and already in 2013, the total cumulative number of transported passengers reached 2 billion. Now, one interesting graph. Using the data on passenger transport that we managed to find, we tried to present the effects of the opening of each LGV on total traffic performance. For that purpose, we took the opening year of each line and defined the so-called ramp-up period, which refers to the period of adapting users to a new service. We estimated this period to be two years and displayed the data for the year of release of LGV in operation plus the ramp-up period. With these numbers, which are indeed self-explanatory, we came to an end of this video. What we realized while making this video is that we will definitely need to cover more aspects of this system, from the development of TGV trains to the organization and introduction of TGV in We as a premium TGV train service and TGV We Go as the French low-cost TGV service. The latest news is that TGV We Go has entered the Spanish railway market and started offering service between Madrid and Barcelona. And one more thing before the end. As some of you have already seen, Railways Explained is now on Patreon. So, if you want to support our work, now you can do it on that platform. The link will be in the description. Also, special thanks to all of you guys who already decided to become our patrons. That really means a lot. And finally, this was all for today, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your real loving friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.